I'm here with Kevin Krychik, who is a senior science writer with Columbia University at uh, the Earth Institute. Uh, you are doing a talk tomorrow about the diamond hunters. Tell us a bit about the history of diamond exploration in North America. How did it all start? Well, you know, it goes back to the earliest settlers, actually, the, the earliest explorers in the 1500s. Uh, these guys always had their eye out for silver or gold or precious stones or whatever you know they could get their hands on. They found a lot of that stuff fairly early on, but um, interestingly, nobody found a single diamond that we know about until the mid 1800s, hundreds of years later. And, and these were all loose stones, just single stones. It wasn't, in fact, until the, the 1990s that anybody found an actual deposit that was worth mining, and that was in a very far away place in the far northern tundra of the, the Northwest Territories. So I, I think it's amazing that something took um, something that started in the 1500s took four or five hundred years to come to fruition. Now, how widespread is diamond mining uh, around the world? Uh, it's surprisingly widespread. Uh, the number one producer lately has been Russia. Uh, followed by various countries in Africa, and uh, now with the find in, in Canada, Canada supplies uh, about 15% mm -hmm. of the world's diamonds. In 2013, the uh, world production official figure was uh, about 130 million carats, uh, so that works out to uh, 26 metric tons of diamonds. The market is insatiable. Uh, we're, we're constantly looking for more, and we're going further and further out uh, to do that. And what have been the costs of uh, all of this exploration? Diamond mining is fairly benign. It has a small footprint. Uh, it doesn't tend to produce the nasty um, byproducts that, is, that gold and copper mines sometimes do. Mm -hmm. um, but that said, uh, the mines that we found now in the far north, these are off beyond the tree line in the tundra. Yeah. It's a very delicate environment. Uh, people have never really disturbed this environment in modern times. So I think we have to be really concerned about what it's going to do to one of the last real frontiers. It's not that much wilderness left on the planet. So do you think a balance is possible between our insatiable appetite for diamonds and, and what we're actually able to produce in a way that's safe for the environment potentially? Uh, well, well, let's, let's be clear. Most of the value of the diamond mines are, are um, in gem grade diamonds, which we don't actually need. And in fact, the industrials, we can, we can largely um, manufacture that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I don't think about, um, I, I think diamond mining is just a symptom of, of the larger extractive resources that we uh, engage in, including hydrocarbons and um, the metals. We're now moving into the Arctic because the climate is changing, we're melting the Arctic, so that's going to open up the top of the world to shipping. Mm -hmm. We're going to be able to get at large amounts of oil, gas, and metals and minerals uh, in the far north very soon, in the next, next you know, decades. So I think that has enormous implications, and I don't know whether we can really keep sustaining that or not. Right. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Kevin. That was uh, interesting, and I look forward to hearing more from your talk. Thanks.